Hey, I want to welcome everyone to Straight Talk tonight. Uh, glad you could join us. This is where we are dealing with real life issues, Christian walk struggles, and then just talking about what God's Word has to say about it straight and real. Uh, glad you could come, and uh, if you know people that uh, would benefit from this, if you've seen this before, we encourage you to invite them. Uh, if this is your first time, we're just reaching out to people who are uh, unchurched, struggling in church, uh, some people that are just really not walking with God like they know they could, and many people are just looking for uh, answers. I've, I've done some polling, talking to different uh, young people ages anywhere from 18 to, to 30 years old, and you know, most people don't have a problem walking with God, knowing God. It's just that they don't have that connection with God, and so they feel like maybe, you know, he's not concerned, he doesn't care, uh, but they got a lot of misconceptions, and uh, so we're just dealing with some of these real-life issues to kind of help people uh, get on track with God and find out that God has a great life for you, God has a plan for your life, He has a call on your life, and God wants to change your life. So uh, stay with us here tonight. We're going to get into an uh, interesting subject. I want to talk to you tonight about the power of words. You know, many people today find themselves in circumstances and situations uh, that they don't know why they're there. They have no idea how they got there, and uh, they really don't know what to do about it. But, you know, uh, if you were to find out that the Bible said that what you say and what you think uh, could change your life, would you be interested to find out? Well, let's get into this tonight. Let's tackle this subject. I want to talk about the power of your words. I've got some notes here and some things I want to share. So uh, let's just look at some things. I'm going to read a scripture to you tonight. Proverbs, the uh, 16th uh, chapter, verse 21 it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it will eat the fruit of it. There's power in what you say. There's power in the words that you say. And if you don't realize what you're saying and the impact of what you're saying, then it can have a very, very strong uh, effect on the things in your life. And many people today use a lot of words, say a lot of things, uh, and think it means nothing whatsoever. They, they speak to uh, one another and they say stuff they really don't mean. And then they come along later, sometimes, you know, believers do this, and then they want to get, get answers from God and expect God to do things on their behalf. But, you know, if your words are light and frothy and they don't mean anything and you just always of a, a joking nature, and there's, you know, it's not bad to joke occasionally if it's not filthy joking. But if you're, if you're always doing that and there's never a, of a serious tone and you don't take yourself serious and other people don't take you too serious, how are you ever going to think that God's going to do anything in your life? Well, you really won't expect him to. Why? Well, because you don't have much confidence in the things that you say. You're kind of on a light level. And uh, I know that sounds a little bit tough, but listen, if we're going to walk free... And if we're going to walk in victory in life, we're going to see things change our life. We've got to know the truth. It doesn't do anybody any good to just, you know, pet them on the head and say, you know, I'm okay, you're okay, everything's cool, and, and just let people go like that. Because, you know, when you're walking in the dark and you don't know it, and the people that you hang out with are walking in the dark and they're not doing any better, Jesus kind of said it like this. He said, if the blind follow the blind, they both end up in the ditch. I don't know about you, but I've spent a little bit of time in the ditch in my life, and I don't care to return. So let's look at, uh, let's look at some things that the Bible has to say about the power of our words. And again, you know, people today say stuff all the time, you know, that just kills me, that scared me to death. A lot of negative, negative talk. And uh, people think, oh, what does that matter? Well, we're going to find out what that matters. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, the 12th chapter uh, verse 33, Jesus said, What fills your heart will come out of your mouth. And again, Proverbs that we just read uh, tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it, or they that, that use it and speak it, it says that they'll eat the fruit of it. Notice uh, Matthew's Gospel, and again the 36th verse, 37 Jesus said that every idle word 
that men shall speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Now notice this. This is verse 37. He said, For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. didn't say what other people are saying about you or speaking around you. It said what you say. It was, it's what you say that matters. It's what you say that has a governing power over your life. Jesus himself said, it's your words that either justify you and make things right, or it's your words that condemn you. Now listen, um, I found the Message Bible translation on the same verse, and it puts a, a little different uh, insight into what he was saying here. It says, there will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can be your damnation. Now think about that. Words can be your salvation, and words can also be your damnation. So you really want to think about what you're about to say, what you've been saying. You know, because of these scriptures, um, the Word of God's telling us that these things will change our lives, what we say, what we speak, what we believe. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 says, As he thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, what you meditate on, what you think on, eventually will come out of your mouth. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, the New Living Translation said, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Why do you want to guard that? Because what you think will get down on the inside of you if you meditate on it long enough. And eventually, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever fills your heart uh, is what's going to come out, and you're going to begin to speak it. Now, do you want to just speak defeat and sickness and disease and poverty and nothing ever works for me and everybody else gets all the breaks and I never do and if anyone's going to get fired, it's going to be me? I don't think you really want that to come to pass. I catch some people saying stuff like that every once in a while. I say, hey, you want me to agree with you? You know, let's just pray and agree that that will absolutely come to pass. And, of course, they just stop and look at me like, no. So why are you saying it then? Why do you talk like that? Most people don't realize the power of their words. Again, let me say, Jesus said every idle word, every idle word that men speak, another translation about idle words is, uh, words without uh, meaning, words without uh, something that would upbuild, uplift, that would prosper. He says, you're going to give an account for it. They're powerless words. They're wasted words. They're not the words that God wants us to speak. And it says that, for by your words you'll be justified. By your words you'll be condemned. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs says. And they that indulge it will eat of it. Evidently, what you say is going to have an effect on your life. But, you know, it doesn't start with just talking. People don't just talk. You know, it's a choice in what we say, and, and it's an influence. And before there can ever be a choice, there's always a thought. There's always a thought. And we make a choice about what we say and what we don't say. Are you aware of the truth of what you're really saying? What the words that you say, what they really mean? Are you thinking about what you're saying and the consequences of it? I know this sounds pretty deep to some of you, pretty powerful, but listen, it's the Word of God. And if God says our words matter, then our words matter. And if it was me, I want my words to count for me. I want my words to bless my life, not curse it. I want my words to strengthen my life, not weaken it. I want my words to empower my life, not just pull the plug on me. But you know, many people, as we said in the opening of this, of this session tonight, they're in circumstances of life. They have no idea how they got there. They don't know why they're there. It's very possible that what you're saying has created the world that you're in right now. What occupies your mind is going to determine eventually what will come out of your mouth, according to what Jesus said. 
I want to say it to you this way. Your thoughts will provide fuel for your words, and your words will provide fuel for your world. I want to say that again. Your thoughts will provide fuel for your words, and your words will provide fuel for your world. Now, what kind of world do you want to be in? What kind of world do you want to have? You know, many people today live in a fearful world, a very uncertain world. But in God, in His Word, there's truths in the Bible that completely give us a confidence that the Lord is our strength. The Lord is our refuge. The Lord is our source. The Lord is our ability. The Lord is our defender. The Lord is our power. The Lord is our healer. The Lord is our great provider. And if he's your source and he's your supply, then fear won't be able to take a hold of you. It won't be able to keep you. But if you don't know that, then you're probably going to say the wrong things. Like I've said many times, the, one of the most important things you can do as a Christian is to get your mind renewed with God's Word. You need a new program. You need a new picture. You need something put in that's positive. Hosea said this in chapter 8 and verse 7 in the Old Testament. It said, For they plant the wind and they shall harvest tornadoes. Simply, you know, there's two truths here. One of them is that we have to be responsible for what we say and what we do. But, you know, there's another thing there. He's saying, I, if you can see this, he says they, they plant the wind and they harvest tornadoes. In other words, they're saying things that they don't realize what they're speaking out, and they're harvesting things, it's reaping things, it's coming back on them. You've heard the statement, what goes around comes around, Well, the Bible simply says, whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. People are saying things, they have no idea what they're saying, what it's going to bring back on their life. And Hosea said, they're, they're sowing the wind, it looks like they're doing something in, insignificant possibly, but then they harvest a tornado. They get something far, far bigger and greater and something destructive, and they, they just weren't planning on it. They didn't think that it was going to cost them anything. You know, life today has been greatly affected by your choices. Many times people don't take a moment to even think about the consequences of what they're saying, what they're doing, Many relationships are broken because of what people say. People carelessly throw words around with no regard to the outcome, no regard to the consequences of what they say. You really have to give an account and be accountable for what you say. Jesus said on the day of judgment, we'll give an account for every idle word that we say, things that we say that we shouldn't say. Now, we're not, we're not, you know, talking about a bunch of do's and don'ts. We're talking about life and death. We're talking about framing your world. We're talking about saying things that are not uplifting, things that are not building life, things that are, that are really tearing life down. And mainly, we're talking about doing it in your life. You want to be so careful what you say. Many people don't think about it. But it's time to think about it. It's time to think about the effect of your words. Now, maybe the circumstances that you're in today, it's not looking very good. And we're going to pray for our audience tonight that are watching this. But I want to say to you, it's time for you to become uh, aware of what you're saying and think about what you're saying. It's time to get into God's Word and find out what does God's Word have to say about the circumstances I am? What does God's Word have to say about who I am? in Christ. And again, many times I say, if you say, well, I have no idea. It's time that you open up your Bible, get into the New Testament, particularly the epistles, which are uh, the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians, the book of Philippians, the book of Colossians, uh, the book of Hebrews, 1st and 2nd Timothy, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Peter, uh, 2 Peter, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, these letters that the Apostle Paul wrote, uh, you want to get into the Word of God and find out what God's Word has to say, and then you begin to speak God's Word over your life. You know, uh, you've got to, let me say it kind of like this, you know, 
A lot of people today are, are getting health conscious and they're, they're eating the right things, but you know, they're stopping eating the wrong things. I myself, uh, just maybe, uh, I guess it's been about 14 months ago, uh, I started to, to go to the gym and work out on a regular basis, uh, five days a week, consistently, and uh, I changed my diet. I changed what I was eating, what I was taking in, and I started putting in the right foods that were going to help me and strengthen me. Now, you can go to church, and you can sit there, and you can hear all the right stuff, but just because you heard it doesn't mean it's going to change anything in your life. James said you've got to be a doer of the Word. He said you've got to be someone who practices the Word. If all you do is hear it, you're going to forget it. But if you put it into practice, it'll become a lifestyle. And that's what you want to do, is you want to get a hold of God's Word, positive words, life-giving words, strengthening words, healing words, words that build hope and words that encourage prosperity uh, in every way, in your mind, in your body, your finances, everything about your life. You want to get God's Word and speak God's Word so that you will truly prosper in life. But without it, putting into practice, it'll do no good. You've got to change it. I heard someone say recently that it takes about 90 days to make something a lifestyle. They say it takes 21 days to make something a habit, but you know in three days you can lose it. So you can't just make a half-hearted jab at this or say, well, I've been doing this for a week. I did it for two weeks. No, you need to do this for about 90 days. You need to just get in there, get in the Word of God, and begin to find out what it says about your circumstance that you're in, and then speak the Word of God. Listen, if, if you had sickness in your body, you simply need to find out that the Word of God says that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed, that surely... He has borne our sickness and disease. He's carried it away for us. You need to find out in Isaiah that it says, surely in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, it says, surely this man has borne our sickness, our weakness, and our pain. And he's carried it away for us. It says that with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 and verse 4 and 5. I didn't quote all of it, just getting to the main parts of it. But it says that with his stripes we are healed. Uh, 1 Peter uh, 2.24 said, uh, whose own self bear our, own, bear our sins on his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, past tense. Well, if you begin to speak over your life and say that my body is healed according to the word of God, Jesus took sickness and disease and pain for me, and you begin to speak that out and speak that out and speak that out. I'm telling you, that will change. Your mind might be going, I, don't, I just don't believe that. But in your heart, you know it's true. And you speak the Word of God, you're speaking life. Jesus said himself that his words are spirit and they are life. And if you want to speak words that's going to change your world into something positive, into something that... Uh, you're in a place where you're so glad you're there instead of wishing that you weren't where you are right now, then you're going to have to change what you think. Change what you meditate on, and that'll change what you're saying. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, the message says, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's, a wonder, it's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you do best by filling your mind and meditating on things noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things worthy of praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me and what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. That's a whole lot better thing than sitting back saying, how in the world did I get in the situation I'm in? 
and I have no clue how to get out. Many times people want to blame anything and everything uh, and put the responsibility off on anyone and everyone except for the one they look at the mirror in the morning. Yeah, that's you. That's me. We have to take responsibility for our lives. We have to take responsibility for what we say. Nobody forces you to say the things you say. Take an account. Begin to monitor it. Begin to just kind of check up on what have I been saying about my life? What have I been saying about this situation? I remember uh, many, many years ago, comes to mind an illustration. I've told this before. Uh, I used to drink a little coffee when I was uh, very young, uh, probably just you know teenager going hunting with my dad. But as years went on, I just I just didn't drink it. And uh, then I got traveling in the ministry and going to different places, and they would offer me coffee. We'd stay in people's homes a lot, and they'd offer me coffee in the morning. And I remember I, I drank it, and I don't know if it was just some real strong coffee or what it was, but I ended up getting a stomach ache from it. And then for just years after that, any time people would offer it, I'd say, oh, no, you know, I get, this, I get this stomach ache when I drink coffee. I can't drink coffee. You know, I get this pain in my stomach, and I can't get rid of it for a couple hours. And uh, I had some friends that would come to my house, and every once in a while they'd just kind of pop in and say hi, you know, and want to talk for a while. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna, I'll keep some coffee on hand for them because they drink it. So I bought a little instant coffee and kept it up in the cupboard. And one morning I was trying to pray, and I just couldn't seem to keep my eyes open. I, I must not have had a lot of sleep. And I was sitting there, and I was like, Lord, I just can't hardly do this. You know, I, I'm trying to study, trying to read right now, but I'm just I'm about to fall asleep. And it just seemed like he spoke to my heart and said, why don't you go get some coffee? I walked all the way over to the cabinet, pulled it up just about to reach out and pull it out, and I stopped, and I went, now, Lord, you know, every time I drink that coffee, I start having, having problems here with this, and I get this pain, I can't get rid of it. And just like that, he just showed me all the people that I'd been saying that to over the years, and that's all I'd said. And then he quoted to me Mark 11, 23. It says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says will come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he says. So you just take out the mountain part. He's simply saying it's a spiritual law. Whosoever shall say, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says will come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. He didn't say whatever good things or whatever bad things. It's a spiritual law. Depending on what you say and what you believe, you will have. Now, I was always saying, I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to have pain. I can't drink coffee. This happens to me, and that happens to me. I stopped right there, and I thought, well, if that's what I've been practicing, I can turn this thing around. So I said, he knew I knew that verse. I had used it, uh, just believe in God for some things and trust in him for some things, but I had never applied it to that. And I just stopped right there, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to drink this coffee. I will never have a problem with coffee. Never again will I have any stomach ache or stomach pain. And that's probably been about, oh, 20 plus years ago. And to this day, I still drink coffee and enjoy it, and I never have any trouble with it. Because <laughs> you can have what you say. Now, notice we, we said here that Mark 11:23, it's a spiritual law. So many people are saying things like, that just kills me, and that just depresses me, and, you know, I just never can amount to anything, and I, I'll, every time I try to do this, it just never works. You need to change up what you're saying. You need to talk more like the Apostle Paul who said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, you've got to become the master of your mind. You've got to monitor what you're thinking, and you've got to take control over those thoughts, and you've got to put the good stuff of God's Word in and force that other stuff out. You've got to stop meditating on the negative, stop meditating on the problems, on the difficulties, on the impossibilities, and you've got to go to God as the Word of God says. Go to God with prayer. King James says supplication. Make your requests known to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. If you begin to say what the Word of God says and uh, obey the Word of God, then you'll have great results. But if you let things go and you just say whatever and you think it just doesn't matter, well, you're just going to keep re reaping a harvest because the Bible says in Galatians, I believe it's uh, 5, 6, that God is uh, not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So, uh, 
you know, if we're sowing words of doubt and fear and destruction and it never works for me and that's what we say and speak over our lives, is it any wonder that things are going wrong? Is it any wonder that things just, you almost get there but not quite? Check up on what you're saying. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 4 and 5, reads this. We are destroying speculations in every lofty thing that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know, that's what we're admonished to do by the Apostle Paul. To take things that are negative, that are faith-destroying, that are uh, tearing down your uh, security in God and your, your abilities. I tell you, you can completely short-circuit your productivity and your ability to just imagine and see great things happen in your life by meditating on and speaking negative things on a regular basis. You really need to change what you're saying. Uh, God's life-giving thoughts, life-giving word is the things that you want to say because if you don't cast down those negative thoughts, if you don't pull them down, if you just let that stuff go in your mind, and, uh, you know, there was a season where I did that. I just had stuff in my mind all just rehearsing stories and somebody arguing with me and all kinds of problems like that, you know, and just on and on. And never even think a thing in the world about it. Just go through those little mental gymnastics and just let the little tape play. Let the little video just run. Many of you do that. It's time for you to get a hold of that. It's time for you to say, nope, that stops now. That stops now. I'm going to speak positive things. I'm going to speak uplifting things. I'm going to meditate on positive things and meditate on uplifting things. I'm going to say what God's Word says. I'm going to find out what He says about my life and the situations I'm thinking about. I'm not going to just let all kinds of words and, and conversations just flow through my mind. I'm going to find out what does God have to say about this. I'm going to find out if the things I'm thinking about God are even right. I'm going to get into the Word of God. You know, if you'll refrain your mind, if you'll retrain, uh, rather, if you'll retrain your mind, refrain from the negative and retrain your mind to think on the positive and to think on the godly things, to think on the right things, then you'll eventually begin to speak it. It'll just come out of your mouth. The Word of God says, out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said, the mouth will speak. And I'll tell you, you see someone sometimes and, uh, you know, maybe they get involved in let's say some kind of game and, and they're playing, they're going to win some prizes and you know, and they're on a team of people and their team's starting to do good and, and they're doing a little better and pretty soon they're going, we're going to win and we're going to have this and we're going to have that because they're all getting all pumped up about it. They've been thinking about it the whole time before they started saying it. What have you been thinking about? What have you been meditating on? Maybe you're around some negative people that just always pull you down. You like them, you know, they're good people, but for some reason, it just you get around them and, boy, they start talking sometimes and they just don't quit. One negative thing after another. And pretty soon you get infected with it. And then you walk away and you just feel drained. It's because you're not having anything positive put in. Maybe you're going to have to spend a little less time around people like that. If you're a person like that, you're going to have to change what you're thinking because you can't leave you. <laughs> You're going to have to change what you're thinking. You're going to have to change what you're saying. Begin to think and say in line with God's Word. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now maybe you're listening to this tonight and you're thinking, I can't do that. That's, ah, I'm so far down in the hole, I don't know if I'd ever get out. Well, first of all, quit saying stuff like that. Quit thinking like that. And begin to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I may not know how, I may not know when, but I'm going to begin to do the right thing, think the right thing, say the right thing, and I'm going to change my world. I'm going to change it. I'm not going to live like the rest of my family and everybody before me and all the relatives that have these same problems. No, I'm not going to live like that way. That's not my destiny in life. I don't have to live like that. I'm going to be different. I'm going to pull up out of this thing. I'm going to change what's going on. You need to take control. Take control with the Word of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, Paul the Apostle said this, We're more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through Him who loved us. 1 John 4, 4, 
God's spirit who is in you is greater than the devil who is in the world. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You see, speaking God's word over your life will change your life. Speaking God's word over your life will change your life, but it starts with what you think. And again, we're talking about the power of words, but we have to tell you, this all begins with thoughts, suggestions, and imaginations. And if the thoughts and the suggestions and the imaginations that you're thinking on are just pulling you down, you need to change the diet of your thought life. You need to change what you're thinking on, change what you're meditating on. And that may mean change what you're listening to, movies you watch or books you read or people that are saying things all the time and feed negativity into your life. If you know it's taking you down, it's not building you up. Some of you, I just impressed in my heart, just as I was speaking, I, I'm seeing that just a, a young lady, and you, you were thinking, I'm in a relationship that's like that. You're not married, but you're seeing some guy. And this thing has just been pulling you down, pulling you down. In fact, you knew in your heart before you ever got involved, you probably shouldn't. But you reasoned your way into it, and now you're realizing, this is just no good for me. This does nothing for me. You need to just say, God, help me. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom and help me get out of this relationship. God's, God's will for you is not for you to be uh, with someone that's always pulling you down and taking you down and, and uh, you know, making life miserable for you, making you think along lines and ways that you know you shouldn't think and causing you to compromise in areas that you, you normally wouldn't have done. You know, that can happen to anybody. And listen, God's not mad at you, but God wants you to be free of that. If that was you, you heard me say, oh my gosh, is that guy talking to me? Well, if that fits, he's talking to you. So be strong, pray, and trust God to give you light on what's going on and how to deal with it accurately. I want to speak to just a couple of other things here. Uh, before we go any further on this. Third John chapter 2. He said, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Now there is a direct cause and effect to what happens on the inside to what happens on the outside. What you have going on inwardly will affect you outwardly. So you have to realize that what you meditate on and what you think on is eventually going to come out of your mouth and it's going to affect your life. Uh, many times people are thinking negatively and depression thoughts and hopelessness thoughts and they're thinking um, defeat thoughts and... Uh, they think that they'll never make it, they'll never prosper, nothing will ever work right for me. Listen, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're life. You may feel very down today, you may feel like there's no hope and no way out, but you have to realize that life can change for you. Life can be different for you. Life can be totally different if you'll take God's word Put it in your mind, put it in your heart, and then begin to speak it out of your mouth. Your life can be totally changed today. Now I want to pray for you tonight. I know there's people watching this, and uh, people will be watching this on the archives. And so I want to pray for you. It doesn't matter when you're listening to this, whether it's tonight or if it's a month from now or a year from now. And you, you say, boy, that message really spoke to me. I want to pray for you. So, Father, we just thank you right now for the people that are listening to this tonight. Thank you for these people who are saying, wow, I've got to change what I'm thinking. I've got to change what I've been speaking. I've got to change up this because the life that I'm living and the things that are going on and the relationships that I'm in, I don't belong in. So, in the name of Jesus, Father, I just pray right now that you will give them the strength and the grace to begin to change what they're saying, what they're thinking, what they're meditating on, and help them begin to find the Word of God and find the Scriptures, the life-giving Word, that they can replace 
what they've been thinking about and what they've been speaking, they can replace those things with the Word of God. Now, Father, we just pray right now for those who are just in situations where they seem like they're completely hopeless and impossible. I just pray over you, and I just break that that uh, mindset. I take authority over that, that fear and that worry and that hopelessness over your life. And in the name of Jesus, we just declare your freedom right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for just reaching in by your power and doing a supernatural work in the lives of everyone who is watching this tonight. Everyone that's been viewing this over the Internet, uh, viewing this in the archives, Lord, I thank you for just setting them free from the things that are hanging them up and holding them up and binding them in Jesus' name. Now, if you just heard this tonight and you received that prayer, listen, be free, but change what you're doing. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Take God's word and begin to think on it, meditate on it. You know, a lot of times we use the excuse, I just don't have time. I just don't know if I can do that. I used to carry a little small pocket New Testament in my pocket. And on my lunch break, I'd pull that out every day and I'd just read it. Even today, you know, many of you, there's, you have uh, different cell phones, you know, smartphones, iPhone, Android phones. There is, uh, uh, I'm going to give a little plug for uversion.com. Uh, you click on there. You can find a Bible, free Bible application to put on your cell phone. It works with uh, Android phones, iPhones. Uh, there's just a big list of phones that they have adapted this program to work on and there is probably in the English language I think there's like 18 19 different translations of the Bible you can download that for free you can do it right off of your phone uh, just go to you version that's you version.com and uh, I've been using this for several years now it's one of the best Bible programs I've ever used and, uh, in fact, a lot of these translations that I read tonight, uh, I got from there. So you get a hold of the Word of God, you get that into your life, begin to meditate on it, and you'll begin to see yourself differently. You'll see circumstances of life differently, and then you'll speak differently, and your life will be changed. Hey, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight for Straight Talk. If you were helped tonight, listen, right there below your player, there's uh, a little... A little click, a little place you can click on, a little line that says comments and, and requests. And uh, just tell us what God's doing for you and how this has been helping. I know a lot of people have been watching this. Uh, we have seen to date, there's over 650 some odd views uh, as of about two weeks ago, I noticed. We've only been going since February, just doing two of these sessions a month. So a lot of people are watching this, a lot of people are being blessed. And uh, if you know someone that needs this, then you invite them to watch at gospelflightmen.org and click on the straight talk. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight.